Oh, uh, this is my least favorite one of the Oh, me too. I hated this. I said I'll take negative three. Oh, negative three. Because I don't want it so bad. You're, you're giving it away. Alrighty, welcome back to another episode of Blind Wine Tasting on the Wine for the People YouTube channel. If you don't know what we do by now, where have you been? Uh, we've got six wines here selected by dear friends at Different Drop and we're trying to tell you what we think of them, how much we think they cost and how many you should buy. As mentioned, these are Different Drop wines. Jump to their website. There's an actually a little section called Wine for the People and that's all the wines we try on the show. If you add in the code Wine for the People, you get a nice little 10% off, which is fantastic. Gives back to Different Drop for helping us supply the wines. Also gives a little bit back to the show, so it really helps us out. Because this is not a money-making enterprise. We're deep in the red, so any support would be very, very much appreciated. Now, I... Also, of course, Brendan will be tasting these wines, but this week we're actually joined. If you have been following the podcast, you may know Gemma. So Gemma works with us here at Unico Zello and looks after all of the ordering and all that kind of thing. So she's gonna join us today and taste the, see, these wines. She's even more of no, novice than Henry, uh, which is wild to think of. So we're very, very excited to see her hot takes about all of these wines because that's what she's known for, hot takes. Hello, I'm Gemma. I, I do um, some orders and, and stuff for, for Unico Zello and I'm gonna try some wines. I don't know anything about these wines. The lineup, just by looking at it, is quite terrifying. Um, let's get into it. But let's not get mucking around too much longer. Let's get into it. And the theme this week of these wines is Different Drops' favorite wines. And as we've kind of figured out on the show over the last few weeks, Different Drops got really good taste. So if these, if, if it's anything to go by, these should all be straight dozens. These are bangers. Let's see what y'all think of these. I also can't twirl the wine as much as people have tried to teach me. It just like, so we'll just do one of these ones. Beautiful. Mm, straight away, I'm also like breezing on the nose too. Lime zest, lifted, fresh, oh yeah. This is, and this is actually kind of nice because you can have reasons that sort of overblow the aromatics too much. Like this is really tailored. Wow, that's awesome. Like great high acidity, like super like lime oily, great charging acid. It does feel like there's a little bit of that kind of almost spritziness with the acidity and probably a bit of unfiltered carbon, so which is actually like fleshes out the whole palate. Not my thing. I would, <laughs> what have I done? Dude, dude, you could power light bulbs on that acidity. That is fantastic. Man, I am salivating. You know what, I'm getting 12. I'm gonna pay $25. I reckon it's Fiano, and I reckon it's made by you know, Kazon. Uh, because I know different drop have been great supporters of the business since day dot. I think it's, oh, Jesus, it might be a, 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 a savvy bee, I don't know. I'm gonna say it's, it's $27 a bottle, and I won't take any. What a great start, what a great start. I really hope I don't like all of these because like the different drops favorites. I mean, I would like to have some sort of contention here, but we'll see how we go. Wine number two, nice little looking like a medium bodied, just a medium everything little white wine. If it wasn't room temperature, it would be really good. Do, do I know what it is? No, I'm just gonna guess a, a different white variety that I know. I'm gonna guess it's a, a Riesling. It's probably not. Or not, yes. Uh, amazing texture, like the nose, to be honest, oh, oh, but I'm a winemaker by, by trade and training, so the thing about the nose on this wine is that it reminds me of aromatic yeast, QA23, if you've heard us say it before, cold ferments. Really, really quite lovely and ripe. Got this kind of like really broad, like white peach, nectarine flavor, which is really lovely. Uh, $30 a bottle, and I'll take three. I'll take three, I'll take three. Um, do I know who made it? I know that, I. I've heard, do Rieslings come from Clare Valley? I'm gonna say it's a Clare Valley Riesling. That's, that's great. Like that's, that's a hallmark of an incredible textual wine. I'm all about it, 40 bucks and 12, irrespective of the nose. But I think that wine, if you put it in front of people that maybe weren't into weird different wines, you know, like people that just drink their Sauvignon Blancs or just drink their Chardonnays, you could put that in front of them and the nose isn't gonna be like, oh, they're gonna be like, oh, it's like white wine, but it's a texture they're gonna be sold on. Mm. Like apricot-y, peachy thing too. Yeah, I'm going, I'm going Shannon here. I'm going half a dozen. I think it's pretty good. Pretty cool little entry level style Shannon. 
Now here's something with a little bit more color. Nice, yeah, nice golden color, a little bit darker. Definitely probably either some age or skin contact or some good barrel work. Hang on, sorry, gotta get the... Beautiful, it's actually quite pretty. I get, maybe it has a faded rim. I think it might have a faded rim. I don't know, I don't really know what that means. That has some age, man. That has some age or it's been sealed under cork and the corks, but <laughs> it's a really good wine. Creamy, delicious, lemon curd. It, it doesn't feel particularly fresh. I don't know if it's just because it's young, but it is very, very interesting and very, very savory. But it's just lacking a little bit of primary character that's really like detracting me from the wine, unfortunately. Just not showing perfectly today. But there's a lot of class and finesse here. I think structurally it's really sound and the use of leaves and oak is pretty fantastic. Mm -mm, mm -mm, mm -mm, mm -mm. No, <laughs> no. <laughs> I hate that. I. I hate that. I'm sorry to whoever made it. While I am being paid to drink it, you couldn't pay me to drink it again. Not crazy high acid. I'm trying to search for a little bit of acid, but you know, because that might tell me it was semion, which is kind of in my head, that's where I was, but I'm kind of thinking Marsan here. I'm kind of stuck on Marsan or Roussan one of those textural French varieties. So with that, I'm gonna get two bottles. Um, I reckon it's probably pretty pretty ritzy, so I might go 50 bucks on that one. Uh, probably feels like an aged shard. Up front, it's fine. Like when it's in my mouth, it's it's fine. The aftertaste is so like acrid. Which means that that six is probably gonna last to my cellar like a couple of years. Tons of life left in this as it stands. I think it is, it's drinking window is freaking now uh, and drinking incredibly well. Now we're on to the red wines. Like it's like really, mar like it feels like this purple and red, like perfect mix. Like it, it's, like you could say that's a red wine, but it's got this like purple highlight thing that I think is just so well integrated. Mm, mm hmm Love that, sort of. Loved it initially, not loving it so much right now. Like really, the knockoff Aldi version of Allen Strawberry and Cream Lollies. Like they're sort of good, but sort of, Shit. <laughs> you know, it's got a subtle amount of that sort of forest floor thing. So that's just giving a little bit of aromatic interest. It's not all, we're not talking like Beaujolais Nouveau style here. We're talking like, you know, something something that's got probably a degree of pedigree to it. The palette though doesn't remind me of Pinot Noir. It feels more like Grenache. It's pretty low on acid, but it's got some great structure and stemminess. It's beautiful wine. There's no doubt about that. It is beautiful wine. Would I would I drink it? Yeah, do I love it? No. I'm gonna change my guess from Tempranillo to Sangiovese. Sangiovese, Sangiovese? Who knows? <laughs> Um, I'm gonna say it's uh, 30, $32 a bottle, very specific, and I'll take th I'll take three. 55 bucks a bottle and I'd buy 12. That is an incredible Pinot, I believe, of an exceptional order from a producer with very high amount of pedigree, but I think this is their playful version of it. Number five, a bit more dark on the fruit spectrum, a little bit more of the, in that deeper black kind of core territory. There's like a peppery, like a real pe black peppery thing going on here too. Really interesting smell. It smells like soy sauce. <laughs> that is, it. it is just straight soy sauce. I don't know what it is. I'm, I, I'll just evaluate it based on quality. Um, and I think it just needs to open up. This, I think this one particular one just needs a, a fair degree of air. Really juicy, that blackberry, black currant, plum primary thing is really quite yummy. No, 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 it's too textural. It's got this like, I keep just wanting to go, because that's how it makes my mouth feel. I just don't, I just don't like it. It's, it also tastes a little soy saucy. Smells like soy sauce. If it walks like a duck and it talks like a duck, it's probably just soy sauce. I'm sort of hanging my hat here on something like Montepulciano or potentially Sangiovese. I, I, I don't think it's Syrah, but if it is, I mean, based on just it being like a tasty red wine, fantastic as like a bit of an identification, but uh, I would pay pretty handsomely for it. I think it's a very good quality wine, um, probably like 60 bucks, but I personally would buy three because my tastes are just a little bit, I don't know, I'm not too sure how, where this wine's actually going to go considering that sort of like green acid but full ripeness deal. Wouldn't it be a stitch up if this is one of our wines? That would be really, I'm, <laughs> I'm gonna guess that this is a Unico wine. Just to be, no I'm not, that's too unhinged. All right, and wine number six. Moving a little shade lighter. Which tells me that maybe it's gone heavier in tannin. Maybe we're in Nebbiolo territory. Maybe that's where they've led us. That's gorgeous. 
I love those pretty, pretty herbal characters. It's got a good structural tannin. It's not very chlorine, it's not very intense, but those herbal characters are so delightful. And it is backed up kind of by a kind of nice red cherry, like cascara cranberry character as well. I like it. I like it. That's really nice. I don't really know if a, a, a wine is light or not, but it tastes sort of light. There's not heaps and heaps of, of texture, I think. I don't know. No, I don't think that's Nebbiolo at all. I think that's actually pretty amazing Grenache. Although really interesting nose considering that. So maybe I'm, I'll, I'll second guess myself a little bit, but I think that's an exceptionally high quality wine. It's not very acidic, which I really enjoy. I'm gonna say that it's a Pinot. It, it tastes the most like a wine that I would drink. The, the finish on it is fantastic. It just, it is sloshy on the palate. There is, there isn't a lot of structure holding it together, but I don't think that's the aim of this wine. I think by, by the winemaker clearly not extracting so much of this, it's allowed that sloshiness to be very playful. I think this is Nebbiolo. I think this is high quality. I reckon this is gonna be about 70 bucks. I'm gonna go Luke Lambert. Hopefully they've been nice and given us a very small part of the allocation that they get given every year. It smells like, like blue gum mayo, <laughs> which is super specific. Uh, would probably drop 60 bucks a bottle for it. And I'd buy, hell, I'd buy 12 of that. I'd buy eight of that. But no, I just I just want to see a little bit more development on the nose, a little bit more expression to tell me, hey man, this is what I am. This is where I'm at, and this is how you should drink me. But I could be totally wrong. Let's see what the others think. Fuck, that was hard. <laughs> <laughs> um, welcome back. Gemma's already Ow. taken the limelight. Uh, <laughs> so this is exactly why we wanted to get Gemma on camera. Because we this done? is, yeah, we've, 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 we we've, we've created a monster. <laughs> Uh, so Gemma, how did you go with your first uh, wine tasting experience? Um, I qu really question why I kept handing you guys to let me on the show. <laughs> Sweet, we'll never do it again. Thanks for um, it. Uh, it was <laughs> it was really hard. I don't it. I really can't name varieties off the top of my head, and mm, it's yeah. really cemented that I don't know much. Well, that's nice. That's good. Which is humbling. Yeah, one hundred percent. But did you enjoy them? Was it enjoyable? There process? were a few that I enjoyed. There was one that I really, really hated. Like you couldn't pay me to drink it. Again. Like I hated it. Okay, Jim hates. Well, Jim hates. hates. <laughs> well, like I, I said downstairs, like man, I, I, we got. I said when we started, it's like we wanted Gemma on here for a hot take. So this is already a great start. You've got some hot takes. Got, got some hot takes. takes. They're probably because you do realise that this is different drops favourites. Yeah. Um, they don't dictate my palate. Good. <laughs> and that's that's the sort of unbiased we'd like, take you get. And we'd like people. and we'd like well, to preface this. She knows nothing. Know she knows nothing. nothing. No. So you, so you, no. this is the one you hated. No. This is. <laughs> okay. This is where we start. <laughs> okay. This is right. I'm starting at zero. In this economy, mm. I'm not paying for wine I don't love. Fair. Yeah, that's, that's actually a great fair. shout. That is yeah. a great shout. Very fair. I loved it. Thought it was amazing Riesling. I thought it was a piano. <laughs> I thought it was a Savvy B. Basic. Um, <laughs> that was the first white what's, wine that came to my head. What's the Jimmy gets this right? Uh, it's like a classic, classic. I thought it was a, um, a Sidewood Savignon Blanc. Don't know if Side would make a Savignon Blanc. They definitely but I, do. They cool. definitely do. Well, I guess it was a side, an educated guess of Sidewood Savignon Blanc. I actually thought this is Unico Zello's Jet and Jasper. It does look like that. Yeah, it because does. like I taste this like crazy high acidity, like really crunchy green apple mm. kind of thing. But then it's got it's got a really broad textural mm. mouthfeel. So mm. I was like. That's, it feels like Fiano. I was like, that kind of reminds me of Jaden Asper. So I was like, well, different job better have else as one of their favorite mm. ones. So I'm like, fuck yeah. Yeah, we don't even know of any of these. Yeah. Unicos, yeah, so like, they could be, they could not be. I'm just like, fuck, they buy a lot of our wine. So I'm just do. like, let's see how we go. Knowing that, thinking that it was a Unico Fiano, how much did you buy? 12 and 25. Oh, hey. <laughs> I'm 12 and 35, I really enjoyed it. And you went zero. I went uh, $27 and I won't take any, thanks. <laughs> even though I really love Jaden Jasper. So if it, if it is Jaden Jasper, that's a Huge lol. Yeah. Lachlan? How much, Lachlan? Oh, oh Riesling Free! I've drank so uh, much of this fucking yummy. wine. This yummy. is great. Delicious, 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 delicious river. Wine. I called it. I think I called it Clear Valley Riesling as well. Well really done. Stoked. Good stuff. This is great stoked. texture here. Mmm. Mmm. I really? thought it was fine. <laughs> <laughs> it was fine. Not well, my thing. What do you know, Gemma? Not my thing. Speaking of Fiano, though, I did think number two was Fiano. That could definitely be Fiano because I, uh, I was attracted from Fiano because of the first one, mm. and I went to Shannon, mm. which is yeah. Didn't know that was a thing. 
I, I thought it was... Um, <laughs> This is so embarrassing. I said Ban Rock Station again, all I could think of. Um, and I said it was a Riesling. I would love it if different drops started <laughs> stocking Ban Rock. I've seen some fucking wild <laughs> shit being purchased by certain bottle shops and like online retailers because of the recession. Yeah, uh, and yeah, if yeah. different drop buying Ban Rock, I'm like, yeah, I understand. I wanted half a dozen. I'll take three. I thought it was pretty, pretty good. I, I said 30 bucks. I said 40. 40 bucks. Oh, nice. Lachlan. Oh, uh, Gruna. There we go. Handoffil Gruna. Gru. Gru. I am. <laughs> Gru. <laughs> For those who have watched Minions and <laughs> Despicable <laughs> Me, <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> That, yeah, um, I mean, Ooh. these are the guys that you know, really champion Bruna as much as anybody else. Did they bring into the country? I'm pretty sure they brought it in. I think they in did in like the 90s. That was crazy. They yeah. did a baller ride thing. Like, once they got it in, planted it, they made it themselves. They then made the grape variety free for anyone that mm. wanted to plant it through Which the is great. hills and then sort of brought it over. Number three. Okay. Oh, uh, this is my least favorite one of the Oh, lineup. me too. I hated this. I said I'll take <laughs> negative three. Oh, negative three. Because I don't want it so bad. You're, you're giving it away. Like, I just think it's a bit too, it's developed, it doesn't have enough primary character, it's... The savouriness is really, really great. I love the flavours of that kind of nutty, almondy thing, but it's just missing primary yeah. fruits to go with it. Like, if it, if it had some, like, kind of stone fruit or stuff like that to wrap it all up, I think it'd be brilliant. But it's just gone too far the other way. I'm, I'm not sure. I'm not sure what it is. Like, as in what it's trying to be. So firstly, in my head, I'm like, cool. Marsan Roussan matured. In good drinking window. Yeah. Uh, if you're into that kind of thing. Now I'm like, bloom? You know? Oh, it's not that oxidative, like, surely. Like some sort of, or oh, what, what, um, uh, didn't Owen Ladder do something like that? But mm. He's I, done the Jurassic. Yeah. And so I was like, maybe? It's not nutty enough. It's like, mm -mm. it's like really lazy. It's not, mm. it's not oxidative. Mm -mm. There is oxidation for, there, but it's lazy. For someone who's not gonna take lazy and oxidated, it just tastes bad. My mouth doesn't like it. <laughs> <laughs> like, it made my heart sad. <laughs> well, I wanted six bottles and I wanted to pay 45 for it. Uh, I yeah. wanted, not bad. I wanted two, but I reckon it'd be a bit exy, so I reckon it's 50 bucks. I said $35, I'll take negative three. So anytime this is on offer, I won't drink it. Okay. I, re I, I also said it was a, a Nepenthe Chardonnay. Wow, it's saying a lot about Nepenthe. I, it was the only place I could guess. I'm literally just listing places I drive past on the way home. <laughs> <laughs> you drive past Bangrock Station, man. That's no, I don't. <laughs> 33, okay. Wow, that is a wine for 33. It's really interesting. That is like a brave wine to release at 33. What mm. is it? What is it? I reckon it could it's be. It's definitely like not Bloom. Marsan Rissan. Hey! That's actually a good shout. I'm doing all it right. It is aged 2017. 2017. You've been, you've been on. I'm, I'm, I'm That's happy a good shout. That is a good shout. I'm happy with this. Yeah, it's just Museum too Museum release. Yeah. Or awesome. Oh, Museum release. Thank <laughs> like I said, if you're into this sort of thing, there it is admittedly, Marsan Rissan's, like those sort of textual Roman yeah. varieties, when they're aged, it's one of those like acquired a taste things. Mm. Like you, that, that is not. I actually wanted to buy 12, but then I was like, I don't need 12. Things started to ramp up from here for me. Yes. Best one to line up. Best one to line up. Uh, love this. This was my second favourite. I really, lineup. really enjoyed this. this. Yeah, I love this. Aromatically pretty and mm -hmm. gorgeous and spicy. Mm -hmm. it smells like peanut in your taste. You're like, ooh, ooh. Mm. Bit mm -hmm. different. Bit more structure, a bit more texture, um, uh, but still really juicy. Delicious. I thought it was peanut. Yeah. I, thought was, okay. I thought it was, my sort of shout on this was that it was the, a playful version from a very serious producer with pedigree. Mm. I thought this was so awesome. Gemma? So awesome. I, uh, uneducated guess, took a stab based on what I like and the varieties that I drink. So I guessed Sand, which is probably, I don't know if it has any of the characteristics of Sand apart from being red. <laughs> um, but I, I really liked it. <laughs> the thing for me with it is that there's a lot of structure, there's a lot of tannin. Mm. There's a real great deal of tannin, so I was like, it feels like something a bit of whole bunch used to get that kind of perfume mm. nose. So I was like, Coda Barrels, Fugazi, bit of Grenache, that, that really I, lovely. Dude, I said a Coda as well. What the hell? I'm a genius. They don't make San Gervaise, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> I'm an idiot. <laughs> Stop well, it. I wanted 12 and 55 bucks. 12 and 45. I wanted 3 and 32. Whoa! Whoa! Mama's buying a bottle. <laughs> <laughs> that is a cracker. What is it? Hoddle's Creek, yeah. Hey. This stuff's Good. amazing. This stuff's mental. 
Wow. Pinot. Mm. Yeah, so they make it like a range up there. They've got like their, their one accru stuff that's really fantastic. But for $26 is, and for Pinot Noir, for sub $30 Pinot in the country, just don't think about it. Run. I'll take that. A playful hey. Pinot from a... Shut up. <laughs> Okay. I like the frog. To, I'm gonna start hacking at that high horse you're on. Like, god damn. Like the frog? I do enjoy the frog. The frog. It yeah. does sort of bump it up to wine number one for me. Yeah. Um, just very because cool. he seems very polite. <laughs> All right, polite wine frog. Wine number five. Uh, look, really good wine. Mm -hmm. Not pour moi. Exactly. I thought exactly the same. I thought it was fine. I. It, it was fine. I struggled to, I was like trying to pick the variety, like it could, uh, I sort of landed on this weird sort of mix of Syrah, Monty, Sange. Um, mm. I think it's a hands-off producer. I think it's it's a little bit reductive, but I think it's finely crafted. I just, there's a bipolarness to the acidity in the body. Yeah, mm. I thought it smelled and tasted mm. like straight Kikaman soy sauce. It also said, Trousseau gets it. Um, you know, this one could be the Unicozello Neb. <laughs> could be. Like, we do have the Maru Bitter Herb thing. Yeah. Oh, I could be trouble. That could be trouble hound. It could be. We'll find but out. I, it wasn't I, a cup of tea. I wanted one at 30. Lucky? Whoa. I'm worried now. It could be, it could be trouble hound. <laughs> that sounds like trouble hound. It sounds like trouble hound. <laughs> Here we go. <laughs> oh, genius! Yeah. Producer. It is. And, and even I was like, Sangiovese? Was it Barbera <laughs> Sangiovese? And you'll be like, <laughs> Uh, oh, there you go. So listen, <laughs> I love that. I've said it before, I'll say it again. I'm a genius. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. Oh, no. Uh, we're gonna have to be hearing about this for weeks on end. Yeah. That's yeah. so fun. I liked it, but I didn't love it. It mm. is the Unico wine that I drink the most. That's really funny. Mm. It's yeah. like as soon as you take away any sort of bias, even if you don't know that there's a bias. Mm. I like so, thinking so about what it is. Room, bar, and we don't like, like it. We don't like it. And I was like, yeah, it's great, not for me. And to be, to be honest, like, that's kind of how I feel a little bit about, about Trouble Hound sometimes. Yeah. sometimes. Like, sometimes. Fresh, fresh AF is yeah. my pick for the rest. Jungle Jungle, all those yeah. different things. Like, Faster. yeah. Mm -mm. But this is, Faster that being hard. said, like, love, people love this wine. People fucking love this wine. People stop us on the street telling how much they love this wine from us. So, really interesting. Um, anyways, last wine. I also loved this. I love this. I, this was my uh, wine of the lineup. Ooh, I it was close. This was a close second for me. This this wine. Yeah. I thought this was epic. 12 bottles. I really hope that they chucked in Luke Lambert's Neviola because I've never tried it before. So that'd oh, be really? sick. No. 60 bucks. And I. Wow. Lucky. 52. Hey. There we go. Up there. Super yum. It tastes like Nag Champa. It does. Taste it's awesome. Good. Hey, Ravensworth. Oh, Another one. Cheers, oh, Viognier. Oh, my I mean, guys. that's awesome. Crack a wine. That's I really a love that. Pretty wild lineup. That's hectic. I mean, they're good favourites to have. They have good taste there at different drops. We know Hoddles Creek. The Hoddles Creek's the one. For $26, it's silly. It's silly. It's the it's pretty wine fun. lineup. There is no doubt about it. Yep, we're all happy with that. Very. Well, I was horrifically wrong on all of them apart from our own wine. <laughs> <laughs> um, that should be, should be expected, to be honest. Yeah. I'm very well educated. <laughs> Um, well, thanks very much for coming hey, on and doing it. Thanks for having me. Any? I need to. I need to practice up. You do. Practice up. Yep. Yeah, just start Gotta getting on the up. piss every night. Oh well, let's wrap it up there. Hey. <laughs> let's wrap it up. <laughs> uh, thank you very much. We'll see you next week. Ciao.